Hello and welcome to Scale War Machines. Time for another guide looking at popular modelling products. Here's what we'll be looking at this time. We've received the latest releases from Verlinden Productions in America. They've been sent to us by Hysterex agents. There's a whole stack of releases and what we see here are the December 2014 and January 2015 releases. We've broken them down by theme and we'll start with the diorama accessories. First up is this one. If you're making a modern diorama this is going to be very useful. Item 2819, some modern steel cable reels in 135th scale. You can see from the box this is the fairly typical sort of item you'd find lying around any modern workshop or work yard. So let's take a look inside. Fairly simple to construct, just some well moulded pieces that you need to remove from the resin back and just assemble. Here you can take a closer look at the outer pieces. Moving on, again in the modern arena this is a street transformer station. This sort of urban accessory is the kind of thing that modellers always love. Really useful to form the centrepiece of your diorama. This is item 2818, 2818 Street Transformer Station in 135th scale. Here's the longest of the street telegraph poles, obviously a modern cement type telegraph pole. Extremely cleanly cast, pretty straight. There's a smaller brother for that. Nice piece of concrete like moulding there. Again, no real bubbles or imperfections. Here are the transformer elements. Those are really well moulded. You also get some wire and a street light. There you can see the insulators, various bolts. That way you get an idea of all the different parts. 2816 is another great idea for diorama builders. It's a blacksmith's workshop. But what you get obviously is the anvil, the coals and so on, a workbench, some tools and some barrels. It's 135th scale as well of course. And here are the contents. It's always the little items like the barrels or the bucket in these sets that prove really invaluable but there's plenty of other useful bits and tools. You also get some copper wire and some plastic rod. Verlinden has made its reputation coming up with these sort of useful diorama accessories and this is no exception. Also in the same sort of category of diorama accessory is 2812 a panzer nest. It's a small vignette from World War II. Panzer nest was a primitive sort of prefabricated bunker system devised by the Germans. Quite a nice idea to have this uh, little scene of life. You could put this at the extremity in a corner of a diorama. Quite easy to build in around the terrain generally. So let's take a look inside. Quite a large lump of resin. It actually can be hollowed out at the bottom as well if you want to make it even deeper. The detail of the casting is excellent. That's roughly how it will fit together. It's got a really good texture on it. As well you get the GI figure. There you can see the figures moulding. There's the head. Quite well rendered. And the arm with the Tommy gun. These items might be useful for both diorama builders and model makers, scratch builders and so on. Item 2817 and 2813. 2817 is 100 bolts and 100 nuts and they're large. Whereas 2813, 100 bolts, 100 nuts, two sizes and they're smaller. These are the large ones, 2817. These are actually so large you could probably use them for a number of different scales. The screw thread is particularly well created and they match up with the bolt. 
Here you can see the smaller nuts and bolts. Again, well bolded, good thread detail and clean, crisp reproduction. They're different sizes and different depths of nuts and bolt. Very useful for your scale models. On to figures now with reference 2811, Luftwaffe Field Marshal Hermann Goering. This is a 120mm or 1 16th scale figurine. Let's take a look inside. Here you can see what you get. It's cast in their characteristic fashion, their yellow resin, which holds plenty of detail. The master has clearly been well made. The braid and medals are well produced. Let's have a look at the head. It seems to capture Hermann Goering pretty well. This will be a fun figure to paint due to the, the larger than life nature of the man himself. Smaller scale this time, 2810 and 2815. This one is a Celtic warrior, a rather grisly pose holding a severed head. 2815, the Roman javelin thrower, nice action pose there. This is a closer view of the Roman javelin thrower. You can see the arrows there, chain mail. There's a little base as well. And there's the head. By way of comparison, here's 2810, the Celtic warrior. Worth pointing out some impressive detail on the scabbard there. Rounding off today's review is item 2814, another figure set German trench raiders World War I, 135th scale. Recently there have been quite a few World War I tanks released, so this is an easy way to display them and to add some life. You've got some drinking and eating soldiers here. Here's a quick glimpse of all the different components that make up the set. As usual, the sculpting is well defined, some nice crease detail there, for example. And this one's smiling, wearing the Stahlhelm. A little bit of detail of the rifles there. As with any resin figure kit, it's just a case of removing the casting plugs as carefully as you can to preserve the detail. And then you glue it with cyanoacrylate or superglue. The German Trench Raiders World War I. That concludes this unboxing and review of the December 2014 and January 2015 new releases, or re-releases in some cases, from Verlinden Productions of America. And they're available to buy over the phone or online from Hysterex agents. Thanks for watching and bye. There's more videos on the website and you can check out our Facebook, Google Plus and Twitter communities. Bye for now.